Guys, welcome back to the Samsung stage. I'm Cam Robinson, filling in for Chris again. I've been following him around the GameSpot live setup. He was over in the GameSpot stage before I followed up. And now I'm back here, and I am very excited to be sitting down with one of the people who basically makes Batman. That's a great... Is that on your business cards? It is. It Maker of Batman. Dax Gin, because Batman. Because Batman. Yeah. That's great. It's much better than my business card. <laughs> well, Dax, welcome to the stage. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you. E3, it's underway. Batman is here again. Where were you last year? Where were you last year? I was in the trenches last year, yeah. hard at work in London. So ever since, even before we finished Batman Arkham City, we went straight into the design and development of Batman Arkham Knight. And that's where we've been. So to finally be here, I never thought this would come. I never thought this day <laughs> would come where we sure. could be talking about the Batmobile, Battle Mode, all of these reveals that, that we've been working on and keeping secret for so long. We can finally just shout. Let yeah. it out. It's a great feeling. You, you feel free to literally shout if, if you like. That's fine. Just move the mic away before you. But by all means, shout away. I do so, like shouting. I might get that way. Let's go. So yesterday, how did it? Like, tell me how how the how that reveal went for you. To, I mean, you, we kind of teased you teased the Batmobile a bit, uh, like a few weeks, maybe even a month beforehand. But you showed off a whole lot of new stuff yesterday. We've actually got the B-roll from the beautiful gameplay from that. Ooh. So let's throw that up. Actually, and take a look. Um, so. Like the first thing that like there was an audible ooh in the GameSpot war room when yeah. this went on uh, yesterday, because it when we get when we see Batman walking out here. Yeah, well we start off in, in yeah. Bruce Wayne's office at the yeah. top of Wayne Towers. So Batman's suiting up into this awesome new bat suit, which is much more Pretty kind of mechanical. military in its yeah. design. You know, Batman Arkham Knight is Batman going to war in All Gotham, right. so it's much more kind of heavy, hardcore, but it's still got everything he needs in terms of flexibility to be agile. But and then the first thing is, man, it just looks beautiful. And the and this, draw distance this is This reveal of Gotham City so is... So what engine are we running here? Is so this, this is Unreal 3. Unreal so 3. Yeah, we've not, been not working, on, on, or working on Unreal 3 for Arkham City, and then okay. we developed a whole load of tools internally at Rocksteady to, to hit this kind of fidelity level. So, um, um, you know, there's a lot that goes into creating the atmosphere of Gotham City so it doesn't just feel like any city, it's Gotham City. And that means the rain, the reflections, the, yeah. the, the, the moon, every aspect of the atmosphere that you would expect in Gotham City has to be right. Is this running on, um, is this running on PS4, PC? What's the this is the on? PC build. This is PC build. And this point here where we call in the Batmobile and then take off. That kind of transition from man to machine, controlling Batman straight into the Batmobile is just something that we've been really focused on because it's such an emotional thing, you know? Now there's quite a lot of destructibility there. Yeah. So even just like a barrier. So is, is a lot of Gotham City this time around yep. trashable in your tank of a Batmobile? It's epic destruction, you know? Okay. That was something that was important to us because the idea of driving the Batmobile isn't just about driving fast. It's about taking any shortcut you want to yeah. get to your objective point Removing as Removing any possible. obstacle in the way, right? Exactly. And then the transformation into battle mode Right. is another big feature that we're uh, really diving deep into here at E3 because the Batmobile has this functionality that means that Batman can fight back yeah. against the military forces that the Arkham Knight has but, brought into Gotham right, City. So, so here's like a Batman cannon question, right? Surely ba ba Batman doesn't kill, right? But then he's basically got a tank and he's firing missiles at people. Doesn't that kill people? Firing missiles <laughs> at unmanned drones. Oh, so the drones. All of ah. these tanks are under control of the Arkham Knight. Gotcha. And okay. that military force is a combination of live and drone targets. Right. So if Batman comes up against a platoon of infantry, for example, he will switch automatically to less than lethal. But you see there that massive missile barrage that takes out yeah. all of those tanks in one hit. So it's like a supercharged move. And then you Whoa. hit top speed, you can eject out, and then you're back up there gliding across the skyline of Gotham City. Amazing. And that, you know, for being in the middle of a battle and then within a heartbeat, it's just serene and quiet and then you can focus on where you go next. That, I really love that kind of emotional interplay. Yeah. So the city, I mean, it's, it looks pretty expansive. Is it, is, uh, how early in the game are we here? Like, does, does the whole city start off open to you as Batman or do you unlock sections or how does it work? You develop as you move through the city. So the okay. idea of building out the entirety of Gotham City was a huge technical and creative challenge for us, but something that was so critical because we know that that's what gamers want. That's what we want to do as a studio as well. So there's very distinct districts within Gotham City. And you can see this, the design of the buildings here are much more kind of modern, much more commercial. Mm -hmm. Did you see the game just start to go there? Do you feel this? <laughs> because this is the moment of terror last night that we dropped at the Sony E3 press conference. We wanted to make a big reveal of Scarecrow. And this was being, played, us, this was being played live at the time. Exactly. Oh, so wow. for us, 
fear yeah. at E3 in the context of a press conference is technical disruption, something going wrong, and ultimately yeah. the game crashing. So Scarecrow uses fear as a weapon, and we wanted to give everyone a sense of what, as a game developer, genuine fear feels like. Mm. So Scarecrow crashing the game, and then breaking through that crash to reveal Scarecrow was something that we kind of, as an idea, really excited us. And then to see it come off last night, and people were like, whoa, was that deliberate? Uh, was that intentional? I was sitting there in the seat just sweating. <laughs> but I think it went down pretty well. Absolutely. No, it definitely did. I think there was that, like, oh, wait, what? Is yeah. this meant to happen? Yeah. What's going like, on? Like three really uncomfortable seconds. His face is really messed up. Is yeah. he, like, melting? Well, the design of Scarecrow, because he's such a critical character, such a oh. massive character, um, we've been working on how his return would take shape ever since the end of Arkham Asylum. We left him out of Arkham City so we could bring him back in Arkham Knight. Is this gas mask like fused into his face there? I know, that's, right? That's not, that's not how it's meant to work. I know! We have to put it on. <laughs> God, okay. So, uh, well, so we've seen Scarecrow. I mean, and the Batman, like in Batman Arkham City and Asylum, you know, there was always a number of Batman's nemeses would appear throughout the game. Is this going to be another, another one of those situations? Are we going to see all the old favorites? Well, this is the thing about Batman. Like, no Batman experience is complete without an immense rogues gallery. But for us, we were really wanted to focus on the, the heroes and the allies as much as the enemies and the villains in Arkham Knight. So, you know, we talked a lot about the Arkham Knight character himself, the way that he teams up with Scarecrow and how Scarecrow is running the show and uniting the rogues gallery. But Batman also has his own side, whether it's Commissioner Gordon or Barbara Gordon, Oracle, um, and all of the, the heroes and allies that give Batman support. So this being the, the epic conclusion to the trilogy, it's this sort of clash of two sides. Mm. And, and there's victims on both sides as well. You know, the, the decision that Batman has made to declare war on crime in Gotham comes at a cost. So it's, it's a much more emotional game than we've ever created before. Well, let's talk um, combat, right? Because obviously when you, with Asylum, you guys kind of set a bar in a way for how third person action combat was going to go. And, right. and uh, a lot of other games have like taken that and tweaked it and it's, you know, it's been really successful for lots of people. How do you know in like your third, your third game, but the fourth in this kind of Batman series, uh -huh. um, with all these other games implementing the same mechanics, how are you keeping it like interesting, you know? It's always about evolution. It's always about iteration. And, and the good news for, for gamers and Batman fans is that's in our DNA at Rocksteady. You know, we, we work incredibly hard, always just finding those little incremental improvements. So new moves like the fear takedown that you would have seen just before we go into the Penguin weapon cache there. Um, in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, we had the ability to really change up combat by just giving one thug an assault rifle or a shotgun. If it's Batman against 20 unarmed thugs, he's just going to clear that room without too much trouble because free flow combat really allows you to do that and dominate. But give one of them a gun and you really have to think about how you take that guy down. So coming into Arkham Knight, we wanted to create a move that could allow you to dominate armed thugs with that same sort of seamless dominance. So the fear takedown is an extension of the Invisible Predator gameplay. And if you get the opportunity for it, you can, with one move, seamlessly take out up to three armed thugs. And it, it breaks up the, the kind of flow of combat, making you feel like you're a complete badass, but in a totally different way. So it's just one example of the way that we're always evolving and always iterating the free flow combat system. Okay. Um, so what about, we, we've, we've talked a bit about the this new Gotham City. I mean, how, how big is it in terms of scale and, and how, how detailed is that? Like what's changed from, what is basically this new next gen hardware enabled you to add that wasn't there in Arkham City? Scale and detail, that's the right. thing that is always the trade-off. You know, if you want to go yeah. big, you can't really go detailed. If you want to go detailed, you can't really go big. But with the, the horsepower of next gen, we, we decided, right, Batmobile is our thing. Batmobile is the heart and soul of the game. The Batmobile drives really fast. The Batmobile can cover a lot of territory. So we're going to need a big game world so that you're not just hitting the edge of the game uh, when you're driving at that, that sort of top speed. So building out the entirety of Gotham City that was something we knew we needed to do. But then at the same time, you can just get out of the Batmobile at any time. This is not a driving game. It's not a driving mode bolted onto a Batman game. It's man and machine. You've got the choice how you play this. So if you just want to get out of the Batmobile and walk down the street, each of those buildings and the water running down the brickwork and the paintwork on, that's part of the graffiti on a telephone box, like gamers are going to be able to see that up close. And it needs to be beautiful and high fidelity. So. The, the advantage that you get with, with committing exclusively to next-gen 
is you can do that epic scale with that high fidelity detail that we just couldn't do uh, with previous platforms. Cool. Well, guys, if you're watching at home and you have any questions for Dax, now is the best time to either tweet them directly at me, that's at CamFrazRob, or just chuck them down in the comments. I'm going to try and pull that up just now. Um, I still have more questions, though. You don't get away <laughs> just yet. Don't get just just yet. Um, so when, when can we expect to, to get our hands on this? Now, I, recently, you know, there was a, a delay, an uh -huh. unfortunate delay. So tell us a bit about that. It's all about awesomeness. <laughs> As a Great spin there. I know, right? Delays, Boom. they're all about awesomeness. <laughs> Check out this awesomeness. <laughs> go, um, go on. Yeah. It's, it takes a long time to create really high quality stuff. Yeah. And as a studio, that's what we focus on. Quality is critical to us. And uh, as we've been developing the game, we've been looking at where we're at. We know where we want to go. And it's uh, just a task of looking at how much time do we have left and can we hit that awesome level of quality. So in collaboration with our colleagues at, at Warner Brothers and DC Comics, we took a look, a look at the schedule and we decided we need more time to make this awesome. Because it's the end of the trilogy, right? There's a lot of expectation and we've got to make sure we hit that quality level. Otherwise, we'd be letting ourselves down. But more importantly, Batman fans and gamers. So wh um, when can we expect to see more then? Are you guys going to show off something, just little bits of Gamescom or is it all just like quiet in the West in front now until it becomes to... Like, I don't know, next year. What's, what's your plan? It's got to be People are going to be hungry for, for more, right? Like, in the lead up to E3, it's just like this black hole of time. Yeah. And it's really hard to get beyond light speed to look to see beyond the black hole, right? Yeah, so absolutely. We've put together a load of content for E3. We've made um, the, the battle mode reveal is obviously a massive part of what the Batman build brings in terms of mm -hmm. gameplay. Um, so, beyond E3, uh, stay tuned, man. I'll, you'll be the first to know. All right, I'm going to let you know great. what's coming just next. Call me up and tell me, <laughs> tell me it'd be great. In fact, you know what? I feel like we haven't really talked enough about the Batmobile yet. So let's just go into like, tell me everything, everything there is to know about the Batmobile. Like, what have we got in terms of Arsenal? You mentioned the two different modes. Yep. Um, so when you're in that kind of tank-like battle mode, yep. well, what weapons do you have at your disposal? Well, it's a completely different mode of gameplay. So Batmobile fundamentals, two modes, pursuit mode and battle mode. Pursuit mode is all about high-speed driving. And then battle mode is all about your offensive and defensive abilities when you encounter the forces of the Arkham Knight in the streets of Gotham. So uh, the primary weapon that you have is the 60 mil heavy cannon. So it delivers like massive punch. And then you've got the Vulcan gun as well, which is a, a, a higher speed uh, rotary gun. So both of those are used to take down tanks and you can zoom in and out for precision hits. And then you've got the riot suppressor on the other side. If you come over to the Warner Brothers booth, we've built this thing in full scale. So you can see these up close. We've also got uh, rockets on board. So in a demo we showed a couple of months back, taking out um, uh, cars and trucks and other vehicles using rockets. So in pursuit, you can fire those. Um, and also the missile barrage that we see at the end yeah. of the demo here to take out multiple uh, enemies at the same time. So but just drones. Which is but just drones, exactly, right? yeah. exactly. Come on, we're, we're not here to break the Batman rules, right? We love Batman <laughs> as much as this, so we honor the Batman rules. Great. Well, that's a great place to leave it. I think, Dax. Thanks right. so much for coming on and talking to us and showing us this gameplay again. It's My been an pleasure. absolute pleasure. So, guys, don't go anywhere though, because coming up next, we have a brand new, unannounced VR experience. So, a game that's going to be on both Project Morpheus and Oculus Rift. Don't go anywhere. See you in about five minutes.